All right, I'm gonna put it in low and put it in four-wheel drive. So here's my hood hinges I made, and they work. I had to repurpose the old plastic hood hinges because I needed this spacing. So I cut off whatever was on here, and then I put them in my sandblast cabinet because they were so bad with weathered stuff. I sandblasted them, then I painted them. And then here's the ones I made out of steel. So I need this spacing so I can kind of hold this hinge part off of the hood. And then I took some half inch tubing that I bought where I get all my steel. And I cut these little spacers and welded them on, MIG welded them, and then kind of ground the, the welds a little smooth. And then I had to drill out the center because this is pretty thick tubing, as you can see. So I had to drill it out to make this 3 8 this is 3 8 brake tubing that I got from the auto parts store. So I cut a little spacer, see, to go inside the hinge. So this was a little bit small, so I had to drill it out. I went one size over 3 8 which is 25 64 drill. So I made a little spacer. And then I went and bought me some stainless bolts with the nylock. And then I'll put that in there. And I'll be able to tighten that down. And then when I bolt this to the hood and to the body of the Kazuma, now I've got a better, stronger hinge. Now I know what you're saying. I can hear you. I can hear you all clamoring. Carol, you can go to Kazuma USA and you can buy those hinges. Yeah, they're 20 bucks a piece. And they're plastic again. So that's 40 bucks for two plastic hinges, plus whatever the shipping would be, or I just made my own for a fraction of that cost, and I'm showing you how I did it. And they're metal now, and I reused the old ones. Same with those uh, latches. You know, this is the latches the guy made, because obviously the latches that held the hood down were rubber like this and the rubber was so poor poorly made it probably rotted away so he had to make these so again here look at these shoot latches from our lawnmower to hold the shoot on five dollars and fifty cents I'm gonna give you the part number when we run run down the list so you can find these latches and then this is the part that the latch went into you know, the original Kazuma latches. You know what they want for those latches, those rubber latches, which are just going to rot away again? They want $20 a piece for them. So $20 a piece for the hinges, $20 a piece for the latches. That's $80 right there for crap. So I got these latches, and I went to the hardware store, and I bought some eyes. So where this thing mounted where the latch went into. I'm gonna put these eyes in there and then this will mount to the hood and then I'll just pull it down and latch it into there. <laughs> now you can get your finger in there to latch it down. And these were uh, like 70 cents a piece at the hardware store. So there's my latches. And then again, we're gonna go visit the the sending unit for the fuel gauge. So if you notice, I got a fatter cork now. So me and Carla, last week, we went out and we stopped at this wine bar. And I asked the feller there, I go, what do you do with those old corks? And he's like, do you need some corks? And I go, yeah, I could use a couple of corks. And he goes, here. He reaches behind the bar and he goes, here. 
Look at the corks he gave me. He gave me a whole bag of corks. I don't need all them corks. I just need like a couple of them. Well, here, take the old, all the corks. Whatever you don't want, throw in the garbage. I'm like, I'm not gonna throw them in the garbage. So I got a fatter cork, and of course I had to sand it a little bit to fit through the hole in the gas tank. Because look, this was the one that came with it. So again, you have one of these side-by-sides or whatever, your gas gauge quit working, you, you shine a light in the gas tank and this thing's laying in the bottom of the tank like mine was. You buy a new gauge, what are you gonna get? Same crap again. You can put a wine cork on the end of it. And remember I said it wasn't going all the way to the bottom of the tank? You know, it was sitting up here. So when it said it was like empty or almost empty, I had about a half a tank of gas. So all I did was bend it right here. That's how you calibrate it. Stuck it in the tank, looked down in there, kept bending on it until I I felt where I, I wanted to have at least some fuel left in there, but yet showing E. So now we got that fixed, look at that. Again, cheap, cork, better than this, crap. And then I got all the plastics cleaned up now. I thought about repainting them, and then I thought, you know, maybe I can clean them. I don't know what all that streaking was on there. I don't know if I did that when I uh, was spraying it down and that soap I used kind of stained the plastic. I don't know. Or if it was stained like that, I don't remember. I have to look back at the footage. But I cleaned it up. This was all discolored. And I'm going to show you what I used to clean it with. But now I want to I wanna make that white. I want to put white paint on there to make that stand out. So, I went to the hardware store again. I got me a little foam roller. Got the smooth one. And I went and bought this paint, the satin, because it said the satin works better on plastic. That's what this company claims. The True Value sells this brand. So I went and bought some satin white. Got me a roller. And again, because I'm trying to keep it cheap, I didn't buy that plastic tray. I made my own. I'm going cheap now. Now I feel like a cheapskate. And I got me a uh, Scotch Brite. So I'm going to Scotch Brite this up so the paint will stick to it good. Just the letters. And then I'm going to put some paint in there. And then I'm going to see how that will turn out with me rolling that on there on those letters to bring that out and then if it's kind of dull I could always clear coat right over it with some paint to make it shiny yeah Carol but you didn't tell us how you cleaned the plastic because look remember the plastic I showed you this is what it looked like again I don't know if I did that when I went to wash it and I sprayed some some soap we had here, or if uh, it was like that when it came in, I don't remember. Because I wasn't really focused on that. But this is what I did to clean that plastic. I took this carb cleaner, carbitrator cleaner. Now this is the good stuff, this isn't the other stuff. There's two different kinds of this. This is the stuff that'll start an engine. That other stuff won't. And I sprayed some on a rag. So if you got one of these that's stained, this is what you do to clean it. We have to do it a bunch of times depending on how bad it is. But it'll clean that off. I did that whole, all the plastics on that. Like I said, I was gonna I was going to pull all these off and scuff them up and paint them. And I thought, you know what? Let me try that carb spray and see if that'll clean them up. That'll save me a bunch of time and having to paint it, take them off and paint them. Because, you know, it kind of makes, kind of starts melting this a little bit. 
so it gets down to it. You can feel it kind of melting the plastic a little. It's like, it doesn't like this plastic. It wants to melt it. More tricks. We're fixing her up on a budget. See? See what good of a job it does? And if you want to get more carried away, you can probably clear coat over that and make it even more shiny. But again, you're going to be out in the woods and getting her all scraped up probably, going crazy. But yet you still want it to look good. And then we're going to highlight this too the same way. Get some paint. Paint that up. You'll see. You'll see what old Carol does. Like a doctor. Side by side doctor. Who's side by side? Who's next to me? Another doctor. I'm gonna run down a list of what I've got into this thing so far. From everything that I've bought with my own money, some of the stuff I had laying around the shop. <coughs> excuse me, that I had. The carb kit that I had to get to rebuild the carburetor, which took three months to get here because it had to come from India and it came right during the pandemic, so. $25.10. That solenoid trick that I used to fix the starter. Now it starts all the time. $14.95. That aftermarket fuel pump that I bought online, that electric fuel pump, $12.99. Two tubes of the HV350. I used two tubes of that glue to fix all this broken plastic and everything on there. $19.98. I needed a couple of these balls because they were broke. $2.50. That brake line, I bought a 30 inch piece of that brake line, but I can use that on other stuff. So I only counted the pieces that I used and I broke it down, it was 20 cents an inch. It was $6 and some cents for a 30 inch piece. So I broke it down, 20 cents an inch, 80 cents of that brake line to make those little spacers for the hinges. Three cans of spray paint that I had to actually buy because I got the blue from Brother Farrell. So it was primer and some in the black, satin black for this. $16.47. Those two latches that I'm going to use, those lawnmower latches, $11. Those two little eyes that the latches are going to hook into, $1.38. This flasher that I bought from the auto parts store, it's a good flasher. You could probably find it cheaper. I paid $13 for this one because it's a good one, heavy duty one. The choke cable. This is a lawnmower choke cable that I use. Because they make, Kazuma USA has got a, a choke cable for this. But that's a lawnmower choke cable from Oregon. It's eight feet long. It's a universal choke cable, so you can cut it to length. Because it's got to be long to get to that carburetor. The part number is 60-122. It was $10.50. The belt. I put a new belt on this thing. Remember I was telling you that belt was expensive? I looked it up, it was $74.99. $75 for that belt, but I wanted a good belt. The red coat that I'm gonna use to coat the fuel tank. You buy it in a quart can, it was $30, but there's more than enough in there to do that. I'm gonna use some on some other projects. So I just rounded it up to 10 bucks, because I'm gonna use about 10 bucks of it. Miscellaneous wire connectors and stuff that I had, and miscellaneous hardware, I figured I better put a price on that. Five dollars, I put a price on that. Antifreeze, because I had to drain the antifreeze out. So I bought a gallon of antifreeze. So one gallon of antifreeze you mix with water, so it makes two gallons, because you mix it 50-50. So I broke that down, because I used about a gallon on this, $8.20. And then this 
weather stripping that I'm gonna use on the hood. This stuff here that I bought online because I had some from another project but I didn't have enough to do this. So I had to buy another six foot piece. That was $18.09. So the grand total of all them parts to kind of spruce this thing up and get it going, $244.94. That's like 245 bucks. So if you think about it, if I was to buy those hinges and those latches, and they had the original cup holders from that Kazuma USA, they were 15 bucks a piece. That's 110 bucks right there, just for them parts. And I did all this for what, $135 more? We're doing this on the cheap. And there's your dinner. That's a cheap dinner. Well, I got the bed back on, and then there was another problem. These bed sides are supposed to fold down, and you're able to take them off. Well, they were so rusted they wouldn't move. And the previous owner had put this stake sides on here, and he had these other boards here tied into these angle irons. So if you wanted to fold these bed sides down, you couldn't do that. So I ended up taking them off and screwing them to the back of that roll bar. So if I want to fold these bed sides down, fold them down and take them off because they were rusted. So I cleaned up all the hinges and then put some never seize on there. So I'm looking at the way they did this with these hinges and I thought, you know what? I probably should have did that with the hood so I can make the hood come off. So that's what I did. I, uh, I redid those hood hinges. So the the way I showed you before, that has now changed. So let's go take a look at the hood now that it's all painted. So I got the hood hinges on. Now remember I said I had a little sleeve in there and then I had a bolt and I thought, you know what? It'd be a lot better and easier if I could remove this hood. So I went and took some 3 8 bar stock and I cut me two little pins and then welded the pin into the hinge here on this side. So now I can lift up the hood like you do with the bed and I can slide the hood off if you need to. And see, it didn't turn out bad for a rattle can paint job. I mean, it's a it's a side by side. It's gonna be going through the woods. It's gonna be getting scratched up. And here's my patch job. Doesn't look bad after it's painted, hardly noticeable. And then my lawnmower latches here in the front with my little eyes. The cameraman can get down there with the little finger pulls now. So now you can undo that. Now we can lift the hood. And then if you unplug the headlights, and then I put some connectors on for those strobes that they had on there. And there's the little strobe box. And then I got everything zip tied to these, which again, I used the HB350 to hold these little cable tie holders on there because I know from using these before, the adhesive that comes with these, when it gets old after a while, the adhesive don't stick and it comes off. So I put HB350 under there, so now they won't come off. So I can unplug all this, and then I can just slide the hood off, see? Then you can just take the hood off. And then I put my weather stripping on there. I'm pretty sure this thing didn't come with weather stripping. It's going to be a little difficult. Put my pins in. My 
Put back on. Come on, Hood. Help me, Mr. Cameraman. There we go. So here's my weather stripping, which I'm pretty sure that this thing didn't come with that. But that's going to help keep the, the water in that out. So I can lean that back and it'll stay. Now another problem I had was this pressure switch for the brake lights. Because my brake lights didn't work and this pressure switch was bad. So I got one from the auto parts store. It's a Cole Hersey one. It's actually a brake light pressure switch for like an old Ford car. So again, you guys that might have one of these, you're like, I'm trying to find that, that brake light switch for this thing and I can't find one anywhere. Where can I get a brake light switch? Again, you gotta think outside the trailer. And right now we're outside the trailer and we're thinking. Because this one didn't work and it had these screw terminals on it. So I got this from the auto parts store. It was like eight bucks. And then I just put these bullet connectors on there, which I got at the hardware store and crimped them on. So now the brake lights work now. So again, lawnmower parts, some auto parts, the solution to fixing up or polishing most of the stink out of this old turd. Because that's what I did, I polished this turd. I've got one thing left to do, and that's secure the battery. Because the battery is just sitting in that battery box. So I need to secure it. Close up my hood. So again, lawnmower parts, rotary, battery hold down, and the rods with the wing nuts from rotary. Here's the part numbers. Eight inch battery bolts, and this is the plastic hold down. And just like I did on the hood, for the latches, I went to the hardware store and got these 3 16th little eyes. So I'll bolt them down in there and then we can hook this into the eye. And then this will go across the top of the battery. This is the same battery hold down I used on the six wheeler. And then after that, everything works. Then we'll take it out for a ride and see how it does. Oh yeah, there, I painted all, highlighted all that stuff. Oh, my little roller. And in the front where it says Kazuma. Again, you know, polished some of the stink out of this turd. It's not 100%, I mean, I could just keep going and going and going on this thing, you know. Painting all this rust and, I mean, where does it end? But, for a cheap UTV or side-by-side, -side, you know, you get what you pay for. If you got a $20,000, $22,000 one, you know there's a quality difference in them over this. But for the price, it's not a bad little machine. And if you can pick one up used, maybe some of these tips and little tricks that I showed you will save you some money. Because again, a lot of parts aren't available for it. You could do a lot of this stuff yourself just by, you know, being a little creative. So let me get that battery, battery secured and then we'll go for a ride. There you have it, battery's all secured. One other thing I forgot to mention, the gas tank. I sealed the gas tank with the red coat. So it's all sealed now. So we don't have to worry about it rusting. You can see the red in there from the red coat. And another thing I did is I dipped 
that wine cork in the red coat to seal that cork. So I dipped it in the red, red coat and I let it drip. And I did that twice. I put two coats of that red coat. How many times is he gonna say coat? On that cork float. And then I got the uh, gas gauge all calibrated now. So when it's on E, it's on E. You better stop and get gas. So it's all ready now. Put the seat on, back in. And as Elskins would say, fired up, fired up, fired up. Oh, you like my little, look at for the, for the month of Halloween. My little blue orb with the spider on it. It's probably a black widow. Isn't that cool? I got that somewhere, I don't know where, so I plugged it in there. All right, let's take this baby for a ride and rip around on it. There's the key. There's our keychain. There's me. Turd polisher. Got a lot of warm up. Look, gas gauge is working. Got about a quarter tank. these headlights suck on this thing. I can see why why you would add other headlights to it. It's kind of noisy when you drive it too. But again, you get what you pay for. It's not a bad little little ride. Seatbelt's on. And if you have one of these, this thing has got to idle low in order for it to shift. I think I need to mention this. It's like a lawnmower. You having a hard time there, Mr. Cameraman? He's having a hard time getting a seatbelt on. Maybe you got one of these and you can't get it to shift. And the only way you can get it to shift is when you shut it off, you can get it in gear. It's because it's idling too high. If it's idling too high, it's spinning the gears in the transmission and it won't shift. So you just got to remember that. In case you're working on one of you, why that transmission junk, it won't shift. Yeah, it won't shift because the problem might be it's idling too high.
parental lock there. That was fun! boy not bad for the little bit of work I had to do to it, it took me about three weeks off and on because I'm you know I'm running the shop and everything too and answering the phone and fans are coming by and bringing me beer and gifts and stuff oh you know so yeah I love that not bad now all I gotta do is get rid of it I want to sell it I have no use for this thing Ooh. and all it's gonna do is sit Cause I got enough projects and we got more projects coming. You know what I need? I need a shop as big as a Walmart. If I had an old Walmart for a shop, then I could keep all this stuff. Oh yeah, and I know you're thinking, Terrell, what about the, you were mentioning something about the water pump was leaking in the water pump. What about the water pump? You know what? I think from this thing sitting so long that the seal in the water pump probably got a little hard and it started leaking. But the more I drove it, it quit leaking. And I didn't put any stop leak or any of that stuff in there. I didn't want to do that. If it needed a water pump, I would have bought a water pump and put it in there. But it quit leaking. I think it just needs to be run. Like I said, the thing hasn't ran in five or more years. That's how long it sat. That's why I had to do all this work to it. It was all weathered and trashed and dirty and everything was rusted. Well, look at it now, it's not bad. A little side by side. So, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Terrell Fixes All. This is me, Terrell. It's a spark plug necklace. Keep this around your neck in case you need a spark plug. Get in a jam. Follow me with your Chinese UTVs on Facebook and Instagram. Go to our web store, buy some Terrell apparel. We got all kinds of other stuff, some of the other products you've seen me use, the HP350, the Never Seize that I used on this project, and as always, there's your dinner. Woo! Finally got this turn polished, now I can get it out of my shop. I wish I had a bunch of land, I'd keep it, tear it up, go tear it around, that was fun. Wasn't that fun, Mr. Cameraman, ripping around that lot? Yeah, we ain't gonna be able to do that too much longer. They're clearing that lot. They're gonna put something there. We're gonna have to find a new place to rip things up. 